This is the second part of the series, and if you haven't watched the first one, I strongly suggest you do, so you tackle any possible knowledge gaps. Without further ado, let's get started. Hello friends, welcome to the sequel of the lithium-ion battery series. In this part, we will examine some possible layout combinations and we are going to proceed with making one. First, let's talk about the voltage options. This is a 1S battery, a 2S battery, a 3S battery, this is a 4S battery, a 5S battery, and finally, but not limited to a 6S battery. Obviously, the most common setup is a 3S, a 4S and a 6S. The benefit of going higher in voltage is that the amp draw is reduced significantly, resulting in most cases an increased flight time. The drawback of the 6S or higher cell count is that more batteries are required, thus taking more space, weight and of course money. Also note that lower KV or higher voltage motors are generally more expensive. This is a 3S 3350 mAh pack. Pretty straightforward and easy to assemble, so let's proceed with adding one more pack in parallel to increase the capacity as we mentioned before. As shown in the schematic, this will be a 3S 6700 milliamp hours and will look like this in reality. Now follow the instructions on your screen to actually make the battery. First, you are going to need this plastic holder that will help you glue the batteries. As you can see, I am arranging them in different orientations each time, so the first one positive is up, the second one positive is down and the third one positive is again up. Glue the batteries as shown, and when done, proceed with the second pack in the same order. Again, first one positive up, second one positive down, third one positive up. Do not glue the middle section. Wait for the glue to dry, remove them, reverse them and glue the other side. After the other side is dried as well, proceed with gluing the top part. And sandwich the batteries together, as shown on your screen. You can use the plastic holder to align them in place. Find a small container to put inside the metal strips you are going to cut to about 3 cm size. Do not skip the container part because it is very likely you are going to end up having some scattered around the workbench. This might result in accidentally placing the battery on top and the result is fire. Trust me, I have tried, so you don't have to. Let's see how we are going to place the metal strips onto the battery cells before welding them. This will provide you a better understanding of the final form of the battery. Pay close attention as this is vital for the correct operation of the battery. This represents all the parallel connections and now we proceed 
with the series connections. If you have done everything correctly, the battery should look like that. With that out of the way, let's see how you actually weld the battery cells. Turn on the machine and start welding the first strip. You apply mild pressure and it activates. You want to weld at least six times on every battery cell. That makes for a firm weld. Proceed to complete the parallel connections and when done, continue to the series connections. Just follow the instructions on your screen. Every once in a while, check that the machine is not overheated. That makes for all the parallel connections. So now, let's proceed with the series connections. This is pretty much the final form of the battery. Make sure that what you see here is what you have built and if so, continue with adding the battery terminals. But first, let's measure the voltage so we are certain that every connection is correct. Here we have 10.5 volts which is pretty close to the 3S nominal rating. It is time to install the negative and the positive terminals. We start by taking the wires, 14 AWG in this case, and cutting them to size. Note that the positive and the negative is not going to the same place, so they are going to have a small difference in length. Cut them accordingly and strip them using this tool. We warm up the soldering iron to 400 degrees Celsius, clean it up and make a small solder blob 
onto the positive terminal of the battery. Do not keep the iron for too long on the battery as this might result in thermal damage. Tin the positive terminal and then solder the wire in place. Next, trace the negative terminal, make another solder blob there, prepare the wire by thinning it, and solder the wire onto the battery. Trace the positive terminal through the battery and cut both cables, if necessary, to the same length. Before soldering the XT60 connector, we first need to install the following heat rings. One large one on top of both terminals and two smaller ones in each terminal. Then again, thin the wires. Clamp the XT60 connector and Thin it as well. And now you are ready to solder the wire onto the connector. The negative terminal is complete, so now it's time for the positive. Again, thin the connector and the wire and solder in place. Place each heat shrink in its correct position, apply some heat and they should lock on in place. For added durability, I use one more 
larger heat shrink on top of the connector that I fill with hot glue. So the hot glue actually shrinks the heat shrink <laughs> and then I apply some more heat and remove the excess glue. We also apply some more hot glue to secure the positive terminal onto the battery. We have reached the final and the most important step in the battery making process, the balance cable. I want you to go ahead and unpin all the wires from the connector, as this is the case many times they come wired incorrectly. We will reattach them later on. When performing this task, do not forget to reset the small locking pin on top of the connector. Now take the other end Trace it through the battery and all the way back to the positive connector. This will be the longest wire and that is the reason we are starting with it. As with every other cable you want to solder, tin the wire, make a small solder blob on top of the positive terminal of the battery and solder the wire. I am using the red cable in this instance because it is connected to the same side as the positive terminal of the battery and that makes the most sense. And then I follow the same logic with the other colors. After the first and the longest cable of the balance port is connected, we then proceed to install the second one. Right? Wrong! We will proceed with the third one because this is the one that takes the next longest path inside the battery. And not surprisingly, it connects on the same side as the first cable. Now you cut it to size so that both cables are the same length. Then solder the wire on the opposite side of the first cable. As you can see, the first cable is red in color, the second one will be white in color and this one, the third one, is yellow in color. Having secured that one in place, continue to the second cable. Again you will need to cut it to size so that all three cables that will be connected are the same length. Solder it in the middle position as demonstrated. And the last cable you need to install is the black one. Again, cut it to size and solder it to the negative battery terminal.
Let's secure and insulate the balanced wires using some hot glue. Apply hot glue to any loose cable that you can see. These additional hot glue spots are made for the battery stability. Now rearrange the balance cable connector pins to match what you see in the picture. I know you want to plug in the battery and see if it's working, but first Perform a last minute check to see if all your connections are correct. And if you're certain about it, have a go and connect it to your charger. As you can see, the battery is performing as expected and we can proceed with charging it. Go back to your charger settings. Set the battery type to lithium ion and for the first time perform a storage charge. Afterwards, you can perform a full charge, just make sure you are aware of the specifications of this battery, as displayed on your screen. After checking the battery, I have wrapped it with insulating tape for protection. So there you have it, you have successfully made your own 3S lithium ion battery pack. On the next video of this series, you will see how to make the same pack but now in 4S configuration. I hope you have found this guide useful for your project. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.